any magicians left on the planet? Yeah, of course there are, you know. And how would, how would somebody know if they were a magician but weren't actually practicing yet as a magician but had the potential, the pure potential to be a magician? Wow, that's an unanswerable question really. Because remember, the magician has a path that he walks that is not like anybody else's, so it's very likely that he won't know who he is, that his identity will be hidden from himself, and that maybe even other people will see it before he does. What I mean is that in the movie Dune, you'll notice that in the film and the book, when they're trying to avoid the worms, they have to walk without rhythm. Yeah. You watch a movie again, there's this incredible scene as they're negotiating the, you know, the serpent, the, in other words, the, the sort of the, the malign presence, you have to walk across the desert without rhythm. So the unorthodox, like in the tower cards, you have the fool. This kind of person who lives on the edge, who doesn't really know or even care what's happening tomorrow, who lives spontaneously, who is guided by some inner force, meaning he's inner directed as opposed to outer directed. He's spontaneous, he's mutable, he's youthful, he's open-minded, he's vulnerable, but he's, he's, he's intelligent. You know, it's... Uh, uh, very much like a sort of Tom Sawyer character, you know, like the band Rush have mentioned in their lyrics. This kind of analog man. We've got to understand that he is not really looking for flowers and speeches or crowns on his head. He will not understand that he is a precious jewel. That's just the way it is. In fact, that's part of his attraction. He's not looking for any kind of accolades. And, and he shouldn't. He should just do his own thing in his own way and he shouldn't give a damn about what other people say, think and do. This is very... This is very much the opening uh, preface of the book that he should read. Because if he cares about what other people think, say and do, he's not going to get very far. He'll be ruined and destroyed very quickly. So that might sound cold, but actually, it's a fact. You have to operate on that manual, because if you don't, the world will eat you alive. Or you'll be seduced into the, the other camp. Absolutely, which is very possible. And of course, um, it's, it's almost like, you see, there are people who are inner, have inner light, they're lit from within, and then the rest of the world is like, they're reflectors of that person's light. I know it sounds a bit like Hegelian here, but there are morally superior people. In the talk that I did at Liverpool, uh, in, the, in the Beyond Knowledge Conference, I ended on that note. I was in Liverpool, you know, so I was making reference to people like John Lennon, you know, just to keep him happy. No. Only kidding. <laughs> but uh, no, I was talking about, you know, the great men, the great musicians, the great authors, you know, uh, and the great uh, lights, of, of which Ireland has so many, it's, you can't even count. So the idea being that there are certain people who are lit from within, and then there's the reflectors of other people's light who are not yet lit from within. And you find that they are the movers and the shakers. It's almost like you have a China vase, a Ming vase. Well, it's going to come in a box full of peanuts. Well, I know it's not as cool to say it, but a lot of people walking around, they're just the packing straw. They are literally just the peanuts. That's just the way it is. <laughs> you know, because I, from a psychological background, I'm not religious, so I don't believe people come into this world with a soul. I'm, a, I'm into psychology, and I believe that man creates his soul while he's here alive. He will do that by maybe going to look at what religion has for him, taking parts of that. He may go towards other philosophies you know, and so forth and so on, but I'm not going to look from a fanatic and say, oh, this guru, this priest, this god is going to do all for me. I got nothing. I don't need to do anything. No, that man is going to be always seeking. He's always going to have the mind of a beginner. And he is that precious pearl. You know, he's that precious boss that sits amongst the straw. It's just the way it is. And you know, he's worrying about what that, uh, his peanut, his, that straw is thinking of him. He's never, ever going to make it, you know, through all the obstacles that, that come because the Siddhartha Road is very hard to walk and there's a lot of challenges on it and therefore it's very good to, you know, uh, be aware of that and strengthen your own immunity, you know. But basically, you see, the way I, I look at it now since I've become actually more of a public figure is that the people who are in the know, they never contact you. These are people who just are out there, they listen to what you say, they've got it, they don't need explanations because they have it already. And the people who come to you are mostly in the beginning stages and they need the guidance, they need the signposts and, and that's fine. That's why you know, work in the public eye and, and use the public platform, you know, to, um, uh, you know, sort of let them know, you know, the things that I've discovered over, over the years. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Magicians. For any magicians out there uh, listening, um, just...
take it on board what Michael just said um, stay in your own centre